even sure what time it is. Have we started class yet, people? Oh, 8 o'clock. Good. Um, we have a review today and test on Wednesday. So let's see if we can, I don't know, I don't know how much time I gave myself to cover this. So I'm going to um, do this, get started, and work as quickly as I can. I apologize. The numbers on your page are written extremely small. Um, so we're just going to kind of make the best of it. But, <coughs> sorry, there's, um, this first one is basically, and there's all different kinds of problems in here as you have, can imagine, but this first one is basically a trinomial divided by a trinomial and you are supposed to reduce it. And you would recognize that you can't reduce anything that has addition and subtraction in it, so you got to factor it first before you can reduce it because the only thing you're going to be able to reduce would be matching binomials or matching GCFs, right? Make sense? So let's come out here and say this is going to be really equal to, and let's factor this top one. It's going to factor into a binomial times a binomial. I should have said, but I checked already, and there's no GCF. If there's a GCF, I'd factor that out first. But you got 3, and you got 17, and 28, and, and none of those are going to work. So, and then I, I set the signs. I look at the second operation. I say, well, it's going to take one of each sign. And then I can factor the x squared. And then I need to come over here and do some um, work with the, the numbers. So I've got 3 times a negative 28. Well, when I multiply those two together, and you would do it with your calculator, you're going to have a negative 84, okay? So I just said the a times the c coefficient, in case you've forgotten how we're doing this. And then the B coefficient is the bottom of my diamond here. And over here in the wings or in the sides, I put the 3, which is the coefficient of the x term, and the, uh, the x squared term, and I put, you know, the square root of whatever that variable was, okay? So that's how I set this thing up. Now I need factors of 84 or factors of negative 4 that will combine to give me a negative 17. And when I started working with this, I mean, I didn't know what they were. So when I started working with it, I said, well, 2 is going to divide into 84, right? But when I divide 2, or 84 divided by 2, it doesn't come close to giving me the answer I want. I would say 84 divided by 2, I'd get two of those factors came out to be 2 and 42. Well, they're, they're not going to combine to give me the 17 that I need, the negative 17. And then I said, well, okay, let's try 4, because I know 4 will divide into it. So I'd say 84 divided by 4, and I came up with 21. Now, 21 minus 4 is 17, right? So I know those two numbers will work, but now I have to say, which one do I need to be negative and which one positive? Well, the answer has to be negative. So the bigger one, the bigger number has to be negative. So I'm going to use 4 times negative 21. When I look at it, that would give me that negative 84, right? And so I'll put over here, I'll put a positive 4, a negative 21, and this one does not reduce. Now that's why we put this thing as a fraction, is so that we can reduce it if we need to. But we say 3x plus 4, well I can put that one over here. And this one is going to have to reduce for me. I can divide both of those numbers by 3, so I'd have x over a negative 7. So that would be x minus 7. I'm giving a slow version of these factoring because you've factored enough now that you should probably be, this should be easy for you, okay? This should be pretty simple, right? You getting there? Okay. So I'm going to say 3x times x, 3x squared. 4 times negative 7, negative 28. When I combine these, I get 4x, negative 21x, well, negative 21 plus 4, right? And that gives me that negative 17x. And that's how I check it, okay? Foil to check so that you make sure you've got the signs in the right place. All right, let's factor this bottom one. It's not going to GCF either, so it's going to factor into a binomial times a binomial. The second operation is plus, so it says use the first operation for both signs. And then, of course, all you have to do is factor the x. Well, this is a simple trinomial. You might not even need to write down the diamond for it. I'll go with the premise that maybe we want to see it. And I'm going to say, okay, 1 times 14 would be here, and the b term is a negative 9. In the sides, I'll put x in the top. And what I want is factors of 14 that will combine to give me 
a negative 9. Now, I know they both have to be negative, right? So I'm really basically going to be adding two negative numbers together to get that negative 9. And I look at 14 and I go, well, 2 and 7, right? Wouldn't 2 plus 7, if they're both negative, wouldn't I add those together and get a negative 9? So one of them is going to be minus 2, one of them is going to be minus 7. And that, are, those are my factors. So I check it. x times x is x squared. Negative 2 times negative 7, positive 14. And I do inside. This is negative 2x. This is negative 7x. I can sort of do these in my head now. Negative 2 plus negative 7 gives me that negative 9. Okay? I'm sorry? It should be down there. <coughs> okay, so now we can look here and say, okay, now this is multiplied, these binomials are multiplied, these binomials are multiplied. We can cross out anything that matches numerator and denominator now as long as it's multiplied and those binomials are and they match, right? So what's our answer to this thing? How does it reduce? Well, it reduces to 3x plus 4 over x minus 2. Now, don't get confused that that 2 and 4 might reduce because they can't. They're not multiplied times their, um, their um, other term there. They're separate terms, and you can't randomly reduce things unless you have all multiplication in the numerator and the denominator, and then you can reduce, okay? Anything that matches. Are you good? Okay, let's go on and do the next one. So now I've got 20x plus 20 over 6x plus 30 times 2x plus 10 over 5x squared minus 5. The fact that it's the fraction times a fraction should not bother you because multiplication is what glues everything together. I'm looking at the fact that maybe I can look at GCFs in these things and factor. I've got to factor it down as far as it can go, and then I can reduce as long as it's all multiplication in the numerator, all multiplication in the denominator, and that takes that... That multiplication between the fractions takes care of that. So this first one, I'm going to pull out a GCF. I think you see it. It's 20, right? What's left? Well, x plus 1. 20 times x gave me 20x. 20 times 1 gave me my 20. Well, that's the first one. Let's go down here to the denominator. And I've got 6x plus 30, and I think you would see a GCF of 6, right? What's left? Well, if I say 6x divided by 6, I get x. If I say 30 divided by 6, I get a positive 5. I'm doing it two different ways, just whatever way works for you, okay? That's the way you can do that. Now, this is multiplied times, okay, another fraction, right? 2x plus 10. Well, I see a GCF. Both of those will divide by 2. When I divide 2x by 2, I get x. When I divide 10 by 2, I get 5. And down here, I've got... 5 times x squared minus 5. GCF again, right? 5 times x squared minus 1. But I'm not finished with that x squared minus 1 because every time you have a binomial that has a subtraction in the middle, you should look and say, is it a difference of two squares? Well, this is a perfect square and that's a perfect square. So we can factor that again, right? We would factor it into 5 times two binomials, one with a plus, one with a minus, square root of the first term, square root of the second term. I can scratch that out now because I just replaced it with 5 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. That's all of that denominator, okay? Now, you could take the time to rewrite this if you wanted to. These are all multiplied by each other, and these are all multiplied by each other. Anything in the numerator will reduce with anything in the denominator, right? So if you want to, you could say this is really 20 times x plus 1 times 2 times x plus 5. All of it multiplication, right? Over 6 times x plus 5 times 5 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. If it's clearer that way, go ahead and do it, right? And now let's start reducing anything in the numerator with anything in the denominator because, look, all multiplication, 
all multiplication. As long as you consider what's in parentheses as just a single item, and that's what we do. Those binomials we treat as, you know, concrete items, okay? So I got x plus 5s that'll go away, and I got x plus 1s that'll go away, right? Now I can start the numbers, because I can't do anything with this x minus 1. It's going to stay there. But I'm going to have, I can start reducing however I want to. I would say, I'd probably take this 2 and divide both of these by 2. It leaves me with a 3. I'd take the 5 and 20 and say divide both of them by 5. That leaves me with 4. Now I start looking at what's left to see if I got it all because we reduced a lot, right? So I got 4 times nothing up there. So that's 4. I've got 3 times x minus 1, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to write it like that. We're not going to distribute that multiplication. That's fine. Leave it just like that because it does show us that we factored it and we can't reduce it anymore, okay? Any questions on this? This is old stuff. We've been doing other stuff since then, though, so you might have forgotten. Okay? Now, the next problem is really more of the same. It's just added one thing to it, and that is it's a fraction divided by a fraction. You know that we don't divide fractions. We always multiply by the reciprocal, right? So your first step is to change this into multiplication. I mean, I can cross it out right here if I want to. I can say that's not going to be division. I'm going to multiply times 6 over x squared minus 81, okay? I'm going to have this big fraction times 6 over x squared minus 81. Now, I'm going to start um, factoring. i got a trinomial and a trinomial, and they're going to factor. Hopefully, they're going to factor, right? So I'm going to look at these two. I'm going to say, okay, two binomials, this first one. I can't factor out a GCF, but I can say, okay, I'm going to have a plus sign here, which says use the first sign for both, two negatives. Factor the square at the beginning, and then I know this one, look at this, guys. This one is one that you were supposed to get familiar with, wasn't it? This one is a perfect square at the end, a perfect square at the, uh, at the beginning. And when I take the square root of this and I add it to, you know, add them together or say multiply times 2, I get that middle term, don't I? So that is a perfect square trinomial. Well, a perfect square trinomial factors into the square root of the first term. Um, <laughs> square root of the first term. Time. Square root of the second term. But you check it always. Foil to check this stuff, right? So I get x times x is x squared. Negative 9 times negative 9 is a positive 81. And when I combine inside and outside, I get negative 9 plus negative 9x. Well, that would give me that negative 18x. Perfect square trinomials. So, you know, before you go to the trouble of doing the diamond, check and see if it's one of those because that makes your life easier, okay? Are you okay? Are you with me so far? Okay. So next, let's factor this bottom trinomial. Once again, no GCF. This time I have a minus in the second operation, which says I need one of each, and I'm going to factor the uh, x squared term. Now, this time I don't have the luxury of a perfect squared trinomial to help me, so maybe I can come over here and see what it is. It's negative 63, and this would be x, and this would be x, and this middle one is a negative 2, right? Whoops, sorry. Okay, so what factors of 63 are going to combine to give you 2? 9 and 7 would be it. So I got a 9, and I got a 7, and I need one of them to be positive and one to be negative. Which is the negative? The bigger one, because the answer has to be negative. So I came up with a negative 9, a positive 2, and now I need to check it. x times x is x squared. 2 times negative 9, sorry, that was supposed to be 7. See, that's why you check it. 7 times negative 9, negative 63. 7x minus 9x, negative 2x, right? <coughs> if you can read my writing over that, that's x plus 7. So now I'm going to say times 6, which doesn't change, and what can I do with x squared minus 81? 
difference of two squares. So two binomials, one of each sign, square root of the first, square root of the second. Honestly, I don't even check those because they're too easy, okay? If you see that, you know what you've got and you have a difference of two squares. The inside combined with the outside, it's going to cancel, right? 9x minus 9x would give me my zero. You understand where we're coming from? So now everything up here is multiplied. Everything down here is multiplied. I don't have to write it over one fraction if I see that. And I see that, so I've got negative ni uh, x minus 9s will cancel. And um, x plus, I thought I canceled something else here. Oh, here's another x minus 9, right? Am I okay here? But what do I have left? In the numerator, just 6. In the denominator, there's an x plus 7 multiplied times an x plus 9. Well, that's as simple as it gets. I can't do any more. They don't really want me to distribute that multiplication. They don't want you to FOIL. They just want you to break it down and see, you know, what the, the, um, how it reduces, okay? And that's it. Because we left it in this format, you can tell that it won't reduce anymore. Okay? All right. Next one. That multiplication and draw a line, all right? I'm just going to say draw a line right here because that was the easy part. Multiplication and division of fractions is simple. Addition and subtraction of fractions is a pain because you'd have to now have a common denominator. These things are changing on us completely. The process changes when you have to have a common denominator before you can add and subtract. Because we have really complicated fractions, don't we? So the denominators have to match. But look at these two. The denominators match. So all we have to do is the math with everything in the numerator, okay? So in other words, what this is really equal to is 5x minus 9 plus 4 minus 6x all over that common denominator of x squared plus x minus 20. Okay? All right, now, let's combine like terms in the numerator. I've got 5x minus 6x. I'm going to put the x's first. I've got a negative x, don't I? And then I've got negative 4 plus, I'm sorry, negative 9 plus 4. Well, that's going to give me negative 5 all over x squared plus x minus 20. Now, is that it? Well, you don't know because you haven't factored that trinomial because something might, might just cancel out if we factor the trinomial. Now, look, this binomial up here, I don't like leaving a negative x. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1. I'm going to say negative x plus 5. In fact, it's sort of required of me to see if these things match, okay? So I just factored out a negative 1. And down here, I'm going to say, okay, this is no GCF, so let's see what it factors into. That part should be easy for you, right? One of each sign, square root of the first term. Now I need factors of 20 that will combine to give me 1, right? I can think about it like that because I can see these real easy. You would make a 20. If you were doing it with the um, diamond, you would put a 20 here. You would put, um, what is it, 1, positive 1. You would put x, and you would put x, right? And then I can see factors of 20 that combine, well, factors of 20 that are really close together. That's what you need, right? That they only have a difference of 1. That's what you need. What about 4 and 5? One of them's positive, one of them's negative. Well, I need a positive 1. So I'm going to go with a positive 5 and a negative 4. And then I FOIL it to check it. Okay, I say x times x is x squared. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Inside, 5x. Outside, negative 4x. Well, 5 minus 4 gives me 1x. So I'm good. Now I look at my fraction. Can I, you see something I can reduce now? 
Anybody? Thank you. Okay, so I have a negative what in this numerator? Yeah, thanks. Let's don't forget that. Over x minus 4. Now that looks weird. We could take that negative out front if we wanted to and write it like this. We could say this is a negative fraction. 1 over x minus 4, right? We never put the negative in the denominator. It, it's not mathematical. It's not, um, it's not really... It's not really wrong, but it's not. The, it's just not the way we do it. Okay, I'm trying to think of the word and I can't. So I would look at one of those two formats and expect that to be my answer. Okay, we finished a page, guys. All right, so let's take a look at subtracting these two fractions. And this time, when we subtract, our, yeah. It would be negative 1 over x minus 4 or a negative fraction 1 over x minus 4. The negative can be out front or it can be in the numerator. It means the same thing. All right, so take a look at this one. They do not have the same denominator, right? Common denominator. When we are subtracting or adding fractions, that's the thing you have to get is a common denominator, okay? Guys, is there a question I can answer for you that you're looking for on your phone? Okay. All right, so now let's do x plus 1, x minus 1. Well, what's common? Anything? Well, the x and the 1, but they're not multiplied, so that's not going to fit for a common denominator, is it? You can't really. It's not going to change much. It just make most of, both of them, I mean, they're still not going to match. Do you remember how we did this? Your least common denominator for these two fractions, it's going to have to include both of them. Make sense? Remember this one? We have to say it's x plus 1 times x minus 1. Well, now, you know that's going to end up with a difference of two squares, and it's going to end up with x squared minus 1, but let's not go there. Let's keep it factored, okay? x plus 1 times x minus 1, that's my LCD. Now, listen, I'm not working... Pay attention to what I'm about to say, okay? I'm not working with an equation, am I? Do you see an equal sign anywhere in this problem? Are you listening to me? Because many of you will try to do this without an equal. You will try to multiply both sides of an equation by the same thing and cancel it out. If there's no equation, you can't do that. There's no equal, we can't do that. We don't have two sides. We simply have one side. It's an expression, not an equation. You got it? So you can't multiply both sides by the same number because we don't have two sides. I, I'm, I say that a lot, and I still get people who miss that. So that's a major problem, okay? So what can I do? Well, I have to, I have to uh, restate these fractions so that they have the same denominator. Now, what can you do mathematically? Well, you can multiply any fraction times 1, and you have not changed its value. Well, I can multiply it by anything over itself, right? And that's 1. I want this to be x plus 1 times x minus 1. What would I multiply it by? Well, it's got to be multiplied times x minus 1. This fraction, just that one side. I'm only working with that one number, okay? Well, if I multiply that times x minus 1, i got to multiply the numerator by the same thing. Do you understand? I'm not multiplying both by the same number, both sides. I'm just doing this one number. I'm converting one number so it has the same denominator. I know I need to get it to this. So when I do that, I end up with x minus 1 times x minus 3 over, and I'm going to write it x plus 1 times x minus 1 because I want them to match, and I'm going to use the format I've got up here. Okay, I did that one. This one's done. This one, I also need to get to that common denominator. So what am I going to multiply this fraction by to have the common denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 1? Yeah, i got to multiply this one times x plus 1. Well, if I do that, the only way I'm mathematically going to be correct without changing its value is to multiply it by something over itself, right? The x plus 1s. All right, so here's, don't, for, oh, sorry, this is subtraction, right? I've got x plus 7, x plus 1, 
over x plus 1 times x minus 1. I now have a common denominator. Now, some of you are going to want to start cross-reducing, but remember, this is subtraction in between, right? This is not multiplication. So we did this so that we could combine these numerators. So what I have really is this. Denominator is the same. Numerators. And this is minus Okay. You see it? All right, now that's, we're never going to leave it like that, are we? We've got to simply figure out what we can combine up here in the numerator, and then we're going to have to see if we can, you know, reduce it. But let's look at combining these numerators. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to have to distribute multiplication. I mean, there's no way around it. Before we can combine or we can subtract these things, we're going to have to distribute multiplication. So over here, I'm going to say x times x. I'm going to write it up here. <coughs> I think I'm going to write it up here. I ran out of room last time. x times x is x squared, right? And I've got, um, this is negative 1x if I do inside. I guess I should do outside. Negative 3x. And then I do uh, inside. I've got negative 1x. And I do the last ones, and I've got a positive 3, right? I'm going to put all that in parentheses. Because it's subtracting, and I'm going to put all this in parentheses, because subtraction is a problem if I don't keep parentheses around them. In other words, I have to subtract every term, right? So I'm going to say for this one, I'm going to say x times x is x squared. And I'm going to say outside is 1x, and inside is 7x. And the last ones are going to give me plus 7. What is that over? Because we don't want to forget. And we're not going to foil this one. You know why? Because we probably just have to factor it later to see if it reduced, okay? Okay, so let's see if we can combine these. What have we got up here? Well, you got x squared, and you got um, minus 4x, and you got plus 3. And let's go ahead and distribute this negative when we get here. We've got a negative x squared, don't we? And, and then, so this is an 8x, isn't it? I've got a negative 8x. Can you see what I'm doing? And then you've got a negative 7. Okay, I did two things at one time. I combined these two, and then I multiplied them times that negative. We just pay attention. In, anytime you've got subtraction of two fractions, you're going to have to subtract everything in that numerator, right? You're going to have to distribute the negative. All right, x squared minus x squared. Do it like this so you can see what happens. x squared minus x squared is 0. Well, now I have a negative 4x and a negative 8x. Well, that's going to give me a negative 12x. This is my numerator. And then I have a 3 minus 7. That'll give me a negative 4, right? What is that over? Haven't changed the denominator, have I? But it's getting to where it looks a little simpler for me. Okay. Now, do you think any of this is going to reduce? There's no way to know until you have fully factored the numerator, right? The only thing I see is the GCF of negative 4. Do you see it? Negative 4, 3x plus 1 over x plus 1, x minus 1, and nothing looks like it's going to reduce. But I've proved it because I have factored everything. That one's not easy, okay? Subtracting fractions, complicated complex fractions like this, is not easy. So you're gonna, you really need to practice this, okay? All right, let's add some that are not easy. Are, are, you, are any questions on that one before I move on? Are you good? You're going to watch this again, this video again, so that you get it, <laughs> you have some practice with it, okay? All right, next, I have 4 over 3x plus 3 plus 3 over 4x plus 4. Well, until I factor those denominators, I can't come up with an, a least common denominator. This one comes into, let's see, I'll just write it out here. 
This first fraction is 4 over, let's take out the GCF. And the second fraction is 3 over 4 times, let's take out the GCF again. Okay, I see a common factor, don't you? X plus 1. So when you look for the least common denominator for this thing, it's going to have to include that x plus 1. It's going to have to include 3 and 4, isn't it? The smallest number that 3 and 4 will both divide into is really 3 times 4, or 12, isn't it? Yeah, I should have written it the other way, but it doesn't matter. 12 times x plus 1, that's my LCD, right? Okay, now I want both of these fractions to get that same denominator. Well, to make 3 times x plus 1 become 12 times x plus 1, I would have to multiply it times a 4, right? So I have to multiply the numerator by 4 also. So that's going to be 16 over 12 times x plus 1. To make 4 times x plus 1 become 12 times x plus 1, I'd have to multiply it times 3. So I'll have to also multiply the numerator times 3. That gives me my 12 over x plus 1, and that gives me 3 times 3 or 9. Okay? <clears throat> All right, now I have a common denominator. All I need to do is put it together. This is everything over that common denominator. What's everything? The two numerators and whatever operation was in between them. Now, since it's plus, you know, that's easy, isn't it? So what's 16 plus 9? Well, I think it's going to be 25, isn't it? Over 12 times x plus 1. Now, that's the hardest those two are the hardest, okay? It's coming up with that least common denominator so that you can um, add or subtract two fractions. The one that you really, really, really have to watch out for is this one, number five. Pay attention to this, guys. See that subtraction in, the, in between the two fractions? That's going to cause you to have to distribute the negative in the numerator when you finally get your numerator, you're going to have to distribute that negative to whatever was in that second fraction. So don't forget that, okay? Yeah. Yeah, you do. You do. If that 12 and 25 had reduced, you know, if it had been 24 over 12, you would have reduced it. <clears throat> but it won't. Actually, it will. No, it won't. Sorry. My brain is still on cold medicine, I'm afraid. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. And your, your book or your um, labs give you one way to look at it, and I look at it a totally different way, so I'm going to show you both of them. This one is a fraction divided by a fraction. But these two fractions have a common denominator, x minus 2. You see it? Okay, so if I were to multiply this times x minus 2, over x minus 2. I'm going to stick these in parentheses because sometimes it's hard to see what we're counting as a binomial. Okay, if I were to do that, I would cancel out those denominators. In other words, this is really x minus 2 over 1. This is x minus 2 over 1. Well, when I multiply that, these denominators cancel and it's really equal to 3 over 1. These x minus 2's would cancel, and this is really equal to x over 1, and I end up with 3 over x. Now, that's how the, my lab math explains it and how they sometimes teach it, and I think that's confusing, to tell you the truth. This is what I always think of. I've got a fraction divided by fraction. Well, I turn it into multiplication of the reciprocal. Right? Well, guys, what cancels here? x minus 2. What do you end up with? Yeah. I don't know which one's easier for you, okay? But if you take those, if you don't see the first method, if you don't see, well, I can multiply it by the same number over itself, which is 1, which is, you know, two fractions. I can represent those as two fractions and cancel out the denominators. 
Well, if you don't see that, then turn it into multiplication by the reciprocal and see what cancels, okay? Because that is clearer to me and that might be clearer to you. Now let's take a look at this one. Do you tell me something that we have finally hit in this problem that we have not been working with in anything up to now? Say it louder. It's an equal sign, right? You see it? These are equations, not expressions. When you have equations and not expressions, you got a whole new po world of possibilities. Now, you know that thing I told you you couldn't do? Now the multiplying both sides of the equations by the same number to cancel the denominator? This is it. This is it, okay? This should be like a red light flashing for you guys because so many of you want to do that when you hit a problem that looks like this one. You want to say, okay, I'm going to multiply both sides by something and cancel the denominators, but you don't have two sides. There's no equal. There's no equation. You understand? I know I'm harping on this, but this is a common problem on the next two tests, and that's why I'm harping on it, okay? So I've got two sides now. I don't have to convert all these fractions to have the same denominator. I can clear the fractions. Let that sink in, okay? Write yourself a note. Clear the fractions when I have an equation. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, you still start the same way. You got to have the least common denominator. That's what we're going to multiply times each fraction to clear it. So I look at these two and I go, well, x plus, x minus 3 is nothing I can do about that. x plus 3. But this one factors, doesn't it? What does it factor into? It does. It's a difference of two squares. I'm going to draw a line through it. Now you might want to rewrite this thing. I guess we should do that, shouldn't we? So this is going to be 3 over x plus 3 and give myself some space. And I'm going to say minus 4x over x plus 3 times x minus 3. And that's going to equal, hope I got room, that's going to equal 2 over x plus 3. Least common denominator. Thank you. That would have been a disaster. Okay, that, the LCD, see if I can write it so you can see it. The LCD for this thing is going to be, well, they have to, it has to include x minus 3 and x plus 3, and this one does, so that's the LCD. x plus 3 times x minus 3. So how do I clear the fractions? I multiply every term in the equation by the least common denominator. And you do that even if it's not a fraction, even if the term is not a fraction, but all three of these are. So let's see if I've given myself enough room to write that. I'm going to multiply this times x plus 3 times x minus 3, I'm going to put over 1, okay? When I do that, these x minus 3's are going to cancel. And I'm going to end up with 3 times x plus 3. No denominator. If it does, if you end up with a denominator, you've done something wrong, okay? The whole purpose of this is to get rid of the fractions. Next, minus. Well, what am I going to multiply this thing by? Well, same thing. Times x plus 3 times x minus 3 over 1, and everything cancels, right? So what do I have? I have minus 4x, don't I? Down here, well, once again, times x plus 3 times x minus 3. No room to write all this stuff, is there? Over 1. So x plus 3 is cancel. What do you have? Although you can't read it, I have 2 over x I'm 2 times x minus 3. Take a minute and make sure you understand that, okay? We cleared the fractions. We have nothing but whole numbers, and this is simple. Now, this is simply simplifying and solving for x, okay? So what do I do? Well, i got to distribute 3x plus 9 minus 4x is equal to 2x minus 6. You good? Let's get our x's to one side, our numbers to the other side, and solve for x, right? We've been doing this since the beginning of time. So let's see, I've got over here, I've got 3x 
and I've got a minus 4x. Well, that comes up to be a negative x plus 9 is equal to 2x minus 6. And I need all my x's to be on the same side. I don't care which side it is. I usually choose the side with the bigger x. Well, this is a negative 1. That's a positive 2. So I'm going to put them over here on the left. I'm going to say add x. Add x. Okay, put a 1 in front of it if it helps you. That's a 9. These cancel. And that's 3x minus 6. Let's get rid of the 6 by adding it because it's been subtracted. We have to do the opposite. That turns it into 15 is equal to 3x. And now we divide both sides by 3. And x is equal to 5. Ta-da! Right? Is that working for us? Well, you could check it. You can go back into this original and you can plug in 5 for x. And um, I guess I can show it to you. And it's really, it's really not hard to do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. No. Does not matter at all. And if you didn't do it like I did it, you'd end up dividing by a negative um, 3 instead of a positive 3, right? No, that's fine. You, as long as you watch the negatives, you're fine. You'll get the same answer. So what if I did plug 5 in for x? This is my check. I'm, I mean, this is not required for you to do it, but you should know how to do this. Because you are required to check some other things. So I've got 3 over 5 minus 3 minus 4 times 5 over 5 squared minus 9. And that's equal to 2 over 5 plus 3. And what does all this mean? Well, this is 3 over 2, isn't it? minus 20 over, and this will be 25 minus 9. 25 minus 9, and this is 2 over 8. Now, I'm at the same place I was before, clearing the fractions. Multiply everything times 16. This times 16 will cancel out, and that is 8 times 3, which is 24. Minus, well, this times 16 is going to be minus 20. And that's going to equal this times 16, and that's going to be equal to 4. Well, 24 minus 20 equals 4. Yes, it does. I realize most of you don't want to take that extra step, but if you want to know if your answer is right or not, that's what you do. Okay? Plug it back in. Any questions? We've done another page. We're only on page two. We're going to have to move faster. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to move faster. All right. Let's look at solving for Q. Now this one is algebra without the numbers. Okay. Don't get lost in algebra without the numbers. It's just do what you know to do. This one has a fraction and it has an equation. I'm clearing the fraction first. I multiply everything times the least common denominator, right? That will cause that denominator to go away. It means that 3a is now equal to f times q plus k. Now, q plus k is multiplied times f. That's the next thing I need to get rid of. I'm solving for q, remember? Next thing I need to get rid of is this f. So all I can do to clear it is divide by it. Well, I have to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. These become 1. This is now q plus k, and I don't need the parentheses. And this is 3a divided by f. Now, how do I get rid of k over here? Yeah, it's really 1k, so I'm going to subtract k. Well, over here, i got to subtract k. But what are you subtracting k from? This is where many people mess it up. Yeah, this is a fraction. Don't lose that. Minus k, okay? It's not the numerator minus k or the denominator minus k. It's the whole fraction minus k. And that's your answer. 3a divided by f minus k equals q. It's algebra without numbers. All right, let's look at a um, proportion problem, okay? A fraction equal to another fraction. And you remember how to solve those? This is the only time you're allowed to cross multiply, all right? When one fraction is equal to another, there's a pump. It's going to pump 15 gallons of water in 10 minutes. Well, don't forget to write the labels. 
when we have a relationship of one number to another, it's a fraction. It's like miles per gallon, okay? Okay, so I've got 15 gallons in 10 minutes, and that's got to be how much can it pump? That's going to equal, okay, so I've got to put minutes here, and I've got to put gallons over here. The labels have to match. So what did they tell me? They told me they wanted 12 minutes. And that means this is my unknown, okay? And so once you've set it up, it's easy. Cross multiply. X times 10 is 10X. Don't worry about labels at this part. And 15 times 12 is what you're going to say here. 15 times 12. And 15 times 12 is 180. So I got 10X is equal to 180. I divide both sides by 10. And I find that x is equal to 18. 18 what? Don't forget, if you've got a word problem, you have to label that answer. You can't just say it's 18 somethings, okay? 18 nothings. You've got to put what, you're, what you found. So I found gallons. That's what I was asked to find. So in um, 15 minutes, they could pump 18 gallons. Is that easy? because we're changing gears again, we're going back to something we've done more recently. We're going back to slope. Slope of two lines. Remember that formula? Label one of the points one and one of the points two. It simply doesn't matter which one. And here's your formula, which you have to know. M is equal to y of point two minus y of point one over x of point two minus x of point one. Okay? So you take the y variables. And this is going to be two minus eight, isn't it? y of 2 minus y of 1, and then the x variables, x of 2 minus, oops, it's a negative. Be careful when you find one of the, the coordinates as a negative because you will have two negatives in there somewhere probably. So this is really 2 minus 8, which is negative 6, and this is 6 plus 1, isn't it? So what's my slope on this thing? 2 minus 8, yep. Why did I put, okay. My slope is a negative, and you can write it out front or in the numerator. It's a negative slope, 6 over 7. That's slope, isn't it, for that line? Is that easy? Okay, finally we hit something easy because it's fresh. We've just been doing this. Okay, we want the slope of another line. It has these two points. Well, it doesn't matter which one you call 1 and which one you call 2. The important thing is that you're consistent when you insert those points, okay, the coordinates. So I'm going to start with the second one, negative 5 minus negative 9. And then I'll do the second one, start with the second one again, 5 minus negative 3. And then I check. I always check it because I plug these things in wrong about a third of the time. <coughs> Looks right to me. This is really negative 5 plus 9. And this is really 5 plus 3. Well, it's going to be negative 5 plus 9 is going to give me 4. 5 plus 3 is going to give me 8. I can reduce that, and I would reduce it always, right? Anytime you end up with a fraction, you reduce, okay? Next, find the slope of the line containing those two points. Well, this is an interesting set of points. Why is it interesting? Because look at this, these two points. Pay attention to what you got. Look, both of the y coordinates are the same thing. Do you know what that means? This line is y equals 5. What does y equals 5 look like? Is it a horizontal line or a vertical line? Horizontal line. A horizontal line has what kind of slope? Zero slope. I know that before I even start the problem, okay? But let's do it. This is point 1. This is point 2. M is equal to, and let's do the Ys, 5 minus 5 over. And it simply at this point doesn't matter what the denominators are, does it? Negative 5 minus 8. It's going to be 0 over negative 13. It's going to be 0. That's my slope. But I knew that because both of the Y coordinates were the same. And you can know that too. You just have to kind of look at the problem. <coughs> it's what? Well, not if it's zero divided by a number. 
Zero divided by a number, remember, is okay. That's zero. If it's a number divided by zero, that's when we can't do it. That's undefined. So that's different. Look at this next problem and tell me what you see about these two points. X is the same. Therefore, the equation of this line is X is equal to 4. Now, what does the line X equal 4 look like? Straight up and down. What kind of slope does a vertical line have? Undefined. Undefined. So this one's going to be something divided by 0, okay? Got it? So let's do it. M is equal to, I'll call this point 1 and this point 2. I'll start over here and say negative 10 minus negative 8. And down here, I'm going to say 4 minus 4. And at that point, I don't care what that numerator is. Negative 10 plus 8 will give me a negative 2, but it doesn't matter. It's divided by 0. And if you remember the little acronym, this is no. You can't do it, right? This is an undefined slope. And every um, <coughs> horizontal line, I'm sorry, every vertical line has an undefined slope. It's something divided by zero. Okay? All right. Um, okay, we've got two lines, and we're going to compare the slope. Now, to compare the slope of these two lines, you have to find the slope of the two lines. What's the easiest way to find the slope of a line? Write it into slope-intercept format. Y is equal to mx plus b. Another formula you have to know, okay? Y is equal to mx plus b. That's my slope-intercept form. <clears throat> so here, this first one, i got to get this negative. I'll just write it here. i got to get rid of a negative 2x, so I'll add 2x to both sides, right? And that gives me 3y is equal to, and I want it in that format, so I'm going to put that 2x plus 1. And now I need to get this to be just plain old y. So every term has to be divided by 3. This one has to divide by 3, this one has to divide by 3, and that one has to divide by 3. Remember? <clears throat> so this is going to be y is equal to, let's take this number out front because it's slope, right? So my slope here for this one is 2 thirds. Good with that, everybody? Yeah. All right, next one. we got to get it into y is equal to mx plus b format. Okay, I need to get rid of 3x, so I'll have to subtract 3x from both sides of this. So I'll have 2y is equal to a negative 3x plus 18. I'll divide everything by the coefficient of y. So I've got y is equal to, now I'm going to take the numbers out front, negative 3 halves x plus, well, I can do that one. That's 18 divided by 2 is 9. That makes it a little easier, right? What's my slope for this one? Negative 3 halves. Look at those two slopes. Compare those two lines. What could you say about those two lines? Thank you. They are opposite reciprocals. They are perpendicular. They are opposite. The fractions are flipped. One of them is, I mean, they are opposites. One of them is positive and one is negative. And the fractions are flipped, right? Opposite reciprocals. These are perpendicular lines. Got it? Let's look at this next one. We have an equation that they want us to write of an al a line that has a point on it, um, 1.6. That's the point on the line, 1.6. And then it's parallel to this one. Okay, if it's parallel to a line, what do you know about your line? It has the same slope. What slope does this line have? Two. So we know we have a slope of 2, and it goes through the point 1, 6, right? Now you have a formula for that, don't you? Another formula you have to remember, right? It's y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And it's just the one point that you need. That's the, the ones there. This is my point. So I'm going to say y minus, well, what's the y-coordinate? 6 is equal to the slope. Well, I know that. It's 2 times x minus the x-coordinate. There it is, right? <coughs> to get that equation, we probably want to put it in y is equal to mxb format. So let's finish with it. 
y minus 6 is equal to 2x minus 2. And let's get y alone. We'll say plus 6 over here, plus 6 over here. I can go ahead and combine those because they're like terms, right? Negative 2 plus 6 is going to be positive 4. That's my equation of my line. Y is equal to 2x plus 4. <clears throat> okay? Now I've got to write one that is through this point with a slope that's perpendicular, that's perpendicular to this line. But I don't know the slope of this line because it's not in the right format. I'm going to have to divide everything by 9 to get there. So this is y is equal to, well, that's x over 9, isn't it? Let's move the numbers out front and call it 1 9th times x minus 2. Are you good with that? Okay. So I want something perpendicular. Therefore, I need a slope. This one has a slope of 1 over 9. My line, my perpendicular slope, has to be negative and then flip that fraction, 9 over 1, right? So now I have slope and I have one point. I do the same thing. I say, gosh, you got to tell me when you can't see the page, okay? Y minus, okay, that's the negative 8, is equal to slope of negative 9 times X minus, and that's the point that's in the point 4. Now I've got it all filled in. It's simply Y plus 8 is equal to a negative 9X plus 36. Let's isolate the y by subtracting 8 from both sides. And I have y is equal to a negative 9x. Okay, so it's 36 minus 8. I think that would be 28. There's my equation. Okay, I finally got down to the most familiar stuff to you, the stuff that we've been working on lately. <clears throat> you ready? Okay. Okay, so we've just got three problems here. Now, I said um, these really would have had set notation out here. You can do that for all three of these if you want to. I was struggling with, um, in Word, you know, they have an equation editor in Word, and sometimes that thing doesn't work the way you want it to. So I was struggling with it. Um, but anyway, substitution method, elimination method, okay? Substitution method means that we're going to um, solve one of these equations for one of those variables, and then we're going to plug that solution back into the other equation. We're going to find a variable, and then we're going to plug the variable we know into one of the equations to find the second variable, right? It's like back and forth. We go back and forth. Remember, this one is already solved for y. So I'm going to take the solution for y and plug it in to the first equation. So I would say x plus 8x is equal to 9. Since I only have one unknown, I can now say, well, this is 9x is equal to 9, right? So x is equal to 1. Nobody has any problem with that, do you? x is equal to 1. Now, how do I find out what y is equal to? Well, plug x in, either equation. I'll do it to this one. y is equal to 8 times 1, right? If I plug it in here, y is equal to 8 times 1. Well, y is equal to 9. Oh, sorry, h. <laughs> so I have my point, don't I? The point is x of y, a 1, y of 8, and now do I check this one? You check these, okay? You plug it back into either equation and you check it. Let's go back to this first equation. x is 1, I'll put up here, check. x is 1, y is 8, and I'll ask myself, does 1 plus 8 equal 9? Yeah, it checked. It's simple. That's the substitution method. For substitution, I have to solve either equation for a single one of the variables, plug it into the other equation, and then I can solve for the second variable, which I plug into one of the equations to find the first one, okay? Let me just go back and forth, and then I check them. Let's do elimination. Elimination means that we want one of these variables, one of them, 
to be the opposite of the other so that we can add them together and come up with zero, okay? I've got 5x and I've got plain old x here. I could multiply this one, this equation, I could multiply this times a negative 5 and I would get rid of that x. Or, I mean, you could do it either way you want to. I can multiply this times a, a negative 5 or I could come up here and multiply this one times a positive 2 because that would help me to cancel out the y's. Well, I'd rather multiply times 2 than 5. So I'm going to come up here and say 2 times 5x plus y is equal to 19 times 2, right? I'm going to multiply this one times 2. Well, I end up with 10x plus 2 is equal to 38, okay? 2y, sorry. Okay, now this equation right here will now go underneath. It's really x minus 2y equals 6. And I add them. I add them. I'm adding. And what happens when I add? Well, the y's cancel. I have 38 plus 6. What's well, going to give me a 44, right? Over here. I have 10x plus 1x. Well, that's 11x. Divide both sides by 11, right? And x is equal to 4. I have got my first coordinate. x equals 4. All right, so let's plug it in. It doesn't matter which equation I pick. I'm going to put it in the second one. I think it looks like the math might be easier. I'll just put this 4 in for this x. I'm going to say 4 minus 2y equals 6. Well, let's subtract 4 from both sides and end up with a negative 2y is equal to 2 and divide both sides by a negative 2 and y is equal to a negative 1. Okay, so there's my point. Let's write the point down. The point is 4, negative 1. There it is. And now we have to check it, okay? <clears throat> it doesn't matter where we plug it in. We can plug it into the same equation. Let's say it would be 4. If I put it in the second equation, it's going to be 4 minus 2 times a negative 1 is equal to 6. Well, that's 4 plus 2 equals 6, right? This is my check. And that does check, so that worked, okay? <clears throat> Don't skip the checking step. All right, I'm changing the last problem. I actually, it came out with some really nasty fractions that I dislike terribly. So I'm changing it for you. Scratch that one out. Let's go to something different. Yeah. You, you did negative, what did you do? Oh, it should have come out exactly the same. Hang on, let me finish this last example and then we'll work it, okay? I'll work for it with you. Doesn't it, because if you said negative five times x, you would have negative five x and negative five times this would have been a positive 10 y and then negative five is equal to a negative 30. Do you see it? Okay. All right, so number 20, like I said, I'm changing it. So we write this problem down instead of that one, okay? Um, I want to do 4x minus 5y is equal to a negative 15. And the second equation is 7x minus 3y is equal to 14. And we want to find the solution. In other words, what we're doing with these methods is we're finding the one point where when these two lines cross each other, that is the solution. That's the point that's on both lines, okay? That's what this whole thing's about. Now, this one, the reason this one's up here for you and it's a little easier than the other because the math doesn't get so bad, um, is because these are not easy to figure out which one you're going to cancel out. We're going to use elimination to do it. we got to figure out which one of these am I going to cancel? Well, it's not easy for me to figure out a 4x and a 7x. I need to get them to be opposites of each other. And, and these don't have, I mean, it's, I'm going to have to multiply everything by something is what it looks like, doesn't it? And that's what this equation I wanted to show you. Okay, so I chose, I mean, we'll just do what I chose down here. I chose to um, go to, um, what did I choose? 
I chose to cancel the y's. Okay? Okay, let's work on that premise that we're going to cancel out the y's. Well, how am I going to get them to be common? Well, one of them needs to be 15y, and the other one needs to be negative 15y, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the easiest, simplest, smallest number that I can come up with. Well, to get this one to be a negative 15y, I'll have to multiply this side times a negative 5. And I'll have to multiply this side times a negative 5. And to get this to be, that would make it a positive 15y. To get this to be a negative 15y, I would have to multiply it times a 3, right? And multiply this times a 3. Now, when I worked it, I did the opposite. I made the, but it doesn't matter. We'll work it this way. Okay? So I say 3 times 4x here. I'll come down here. I think I can do it. 3 times 4x is 12x. And then I said 3 times negative 5y is going to give me a negative 15y. And then I've got 3 times negative 15 would be negative 45. And I fully expect you to be using your calculators to do this, okay? All right, negative 5 times 7x. Well, that's going to be a negative 35x, isn't it? Negative 5 times negative 15y. There's my positive 15y, which is what I canceled. And then I've got to do 14 times 5, which is 70. It's going to be a negative 70, isn't it? Okay? All right, let's add them. These are going to cancel. I'm going to say 12 um, minus 35. I'm going to come up with a negative 23x. And that's going to equal, I add these two together, and I come up with a negative 115. Well, how do we solve? Divide by negative 23. And pray it comes out even, right? Because you don't want to deal with a fraction, which is what the other problem will give you, and that's why I changed it, okay? Okay, so 115 divided by 3, fortunately, because I fixed it for us, comes out to be 5. So x is 5, okay? Now I've got to plug it into one of these equations to find y. It doesn't matter which one. Um, I'll just do the second one here. I'm going to say, can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to say um, over here, I'm going to say 7 times 5 minus 3y is equal to 14. That was the original equation. 35 minus 3y equals 14. Subtract 35 from both sides, right? End up with a negative 3y here is equal to a negative 21. And divide both sides by negative 3. And y is equal to 7. So I have the point. The point is 5 comma 7. So let's plug it in. I'm just going to plug it into the first equation because it's getting lonely. I haven't used it much. So we're going to say 4 times 5 minus 5 times 5 is equal to a negative 15, right? <coughs> if I wrote that down right, say that again. Thank you. Exactly right. Good job. Okay, so I got 20 minus 35 is equal to a negative 15, and that checks, right? Okay, we've got a lot of math to, to work on before Wednesday. We have the test Wednesday. Any questions? This should be a good review for you. There's also a good review in my lab math. The problems my lab math ask are generally harder than the ones on the test, so if you're doing good with those, you should be okay. Okay. Oh, guys, don't forget one more thing. Um, your guided notes book has a review for this test. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> <coughs>